الحمد لله وكفى والصلاه والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على افضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الامين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسالونك عن الانفال قل الانفال لله والرسول فاتقوا الله واصلحوا ذات بينكم واطيعوا الله ورسوله ان كنتم مؤمنين انما المؤمنون الذين اذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم واذا تليت عليهم اياته زادتهم ايمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاه ومما رزقناهم ينفقون اولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم ربنا انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين Ameen. Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With the name of Allah and by His grace and blessings, we are, start, we are starting the study of Surah Al-Anfal today. We are actually in the middle of the second group of Makki Madani Surahs. As you must recall that I have told you, that just like seven ahzab or seven manazil, seven parts of the Qur'an divided nearly equally, so as to enable a person to recite one part, one hizb daily, to complete the recitation of the whole of the Qur'an in every week. So there are surahs, you know, if you leave aside Surah Al-Fatiha, which is a preface to the whole of the Qur'an, three surahs, Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Al-Nisa, they make first manzil or first hizb, then five, then seven, then nine, then eleven, then thirteen, and then sixty-five surahs. So these are very well known. And they were, you know, known in the days of the Prophet wasallam, and in the days of the companions of the Prophet also. But very lately, some scholars have found, and you know, just their minds, you know, they were diverted toward this fact. The fact already was there, but nobody about it thought that this, you know, phenomenon, the Quran has some surahs which are Makki, then some which are Madani, then again which are Makki, then again Madani, then again Makki, and then again Madani, and so on. This way also Quran has seven groups of surahs. Every group has one or more surahs in the beginning, and it ends with one or more surahs which are Madani. In the beginning Makki, and then they end with Madanis. So in the first group that we completed, the Makki Surah was only one, Surah Al-Fatiha. Although it's one, it's very small, but it's very great in itself. Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book, the root of the book. And this one Surah, this is the Makki in this group. And then we have four very long, very big Madani Surahs. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Maidah. Then we have a balanced group. Two Makki Surahs, two Madani Surahs. The first group was not balanced. Only one very small 
at least as far as its size is concerned, it's very small, seven ayat, and that's all. One very small, Makki surah, and four very large, rather the largest Madani surahs, comprising, you know, more than six parts of the Quran, six and a quarter. So, but the second group is very balanced. It contains two surahs which are Makki, which we completed, you know, Surat Al-Anam and Surat Al-Araf. And then two surahs which are Madani. The first of them is this surah Al-Fal, which we are beginning today. And the second will be surah Al-Tawbah. So this is the second group. Now what is the main theme of this group? Taken as a whole, this group, the Makki surahs were addressing the pagan Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula, basically. We find very seldom reference to the people of the book, to the Jews, to the... Christians, basically, all the discourses are addressed to the pagans, the idolaters, who thought that they were following Ibrahim wassalam, while actually they had distorted all the teachings of Ibrahim wassalam. But they claim that they, they are following Ibrahim wassalam. So Surah Al-Anam discusses it and very clearly brings about, brings out, you know, what was the real teaching of Ibrahim. إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَتَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So that was the teaching of Ibrahim, that was the Milla of Ibrahim, that was the creed of Ibrahim. And you know then in the second surah we find, you know, the threat that has intensified. What happened to so many other nations which were there in this very part of the region of the world in which you are inhabiting now? You must remember what happened to the people of the Nuh. Our messenger came to him, they rejected, and then they were destroyed. What happened to Ad, the very great nation of the Arabian Peninsula? What happened to help them? They sent a messenger, Hud alayhi salatu wasalam, they rejected, and they were also exterminated. And what happened to Samud? They were also a very big civilization of the Arabian Peninsula. You know them. What happened to them? We sent to them our messenger, Saleh, alayhi salatu wasalam. They rejected what happened. They were destroyed. In the same way, what happened to those two cities, great cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, to whom we sent Hazrat Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam. They rejected and they were destroyed, annihilated. No trace of the two cities is found. Both of the cities, you know, they just plunged in the Dead Sea. And I think that is why, you know, that sea is called Dead Sea. They were situated at the coast, at the coast of that Dead Sea. And they were just drowned in that. Then what happened to the Malian or Midian? You, you have seen, you know, what happened to Firon? Such a big emperor, you know, and his chieftains, they were drowned. So now this... And will come to you also if you reject our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that is the essence of the two Makki surahs included in this group. Now these two surahs, which are Madani, included in this group, very noteworthy is the point that the first of them, Surah Al-Anfal, it was revealed in the second year after Hijrah, just after Ghazwai Badr, Battle of Badr. The other one. Surah Al-Tawbah, this was revealed much later, only two sections, some ayat, they were revealed in the eighth year after Hijrah, but most of it was revealed in the ninth year after Hijrah, mostly, you know, in the middle of that year, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal, and no, some are very important ayat, they were revealed in the end of the ninth year of Hijrah. So why have they been brought together with such a vast difference in the time of their revelation? The point is that in the first surah, we find the first installment of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to Quraysh of Makkah. They were taken out from Makkah and 70 of them, mostly the chiefs of different clans and, and houses, they lay there dead in the plain of Badr. That was the first installment. You know the form of punishment that has been changing. 
What happened to people of Nuh? The whole nation destroyed. People of Hud, whole nation destroyed. People of Samud, whole nation destroyed. But what happened about Pharaoh? Not the whole nation. Pharaoh and his army taken out from their palaces and taken out from their towns, drowned in the ocean. In the same way, the chiefs of Quraysh were taken out from Mecca and most of them, they laid their killed and slain in the plain of Badr. So that was the first installment, a very big punishment. Then you know the last punishment that came in the ninth year. The biggest humiliation when the command came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Faizan Salakh al Ashurul Hurum, Fakhtulul Mushrikeen, Haisuba Jaktubuhu. They will all be slain, they will all be killed if they now, within four months, this is the only limit, this is the final ultimatum. If they don't accept Islam, they will all be eliminated and exterminated. So that was the biggest humiliation which came to these people who were very arrogant and very haughty. So both these surahs actually, they are depicting the, the end of that great nation Quraysh and the two installments which came to them, the first and the final. So that is actually the common point which has joined together these two surahs and then added to those two surahs in which, you know, the final call to them was given to embrace Islam, to accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is the main theme of these four surahs, which, which comprise the second group of Makki Magdi surahs.